Shout out to Child and Family. We hope everybody's been having a wonderful week. We welcome you to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother, Zach Juan. It's your brother, Kasifo. We do have a, a few announcements that we do want to make before we actually get going with the lesson today. Although we do have a great lesson in store today, the Purge of Jerusalem. Um, we definitely want to send out an invite or reach our hands out for people that want to be church members. If you could, just send us an email at HebrewReaders at gmail.com. Um, we'll get all the information that we need from you. And we're, we really want to see the, the talents within the church to really grow the church. So if, if you're interested, please send an email to HebrewReaders at gmail.com. It should be in the description below. And we'll go from there. Um, well, we hope that everybody's been having a great day. Kasifo, do you have any announcements that you want to make before we got going? Um, just we have new maps on the website on the um, tab, Is Jerusalem in Africa? There's some very detailed maps for those of you who are interested in that. When you read Jubilees chapter 8 through 10, with those two maps we have there now, you can identify the places that the scriptures are talking about to help understand the allotments. Um, we thank uh, Brother Johnny and Brother Zachwa for their efforts in getting that map together. Praise the yeah, it's very edifying. It's none like uh, it. Well, definitely make sure y'all go and check out the website. Uh, Hebrew readers, uh, we usually tell people to Google, Google it, Hebrew readers, Wix, uh, W-I-X, and it pulls right up. There's so much information on that website. Definitely want to use it at your advantage. Um, all right, Brother Katafo, what was yours, brother? All right. all right, this one may take a little while, so hope you guys are comfortable. Discussing the purge of Jerusalem. There is a purging to cleanse the whole house of Israel through the afflictions in the time of Jacob's trouble. And the cleansing starts with the men. Can you read Isaiah chapter 1, verse 1, please? The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. This is speaking of the house of Israel because there was also a remnant of the ten tribes in the kingdom of Judah, according to scripture. Let's continue to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 7, verse 21, and then verse 24 and 25. Uh, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 7. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burnt with fire. Your land, strangers devoured in your presence. And it is desolate, as overthrown by strangers. Isaiah chapter 1 and 21. How is the faithful city becoming harlot? It was full of judgment. Righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers. Isaiah chapter 1 and 24 through verse 25. Therefore saith the Lord, Ahia of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I, I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. And I will turn my hand upon thee, and purely purge away thy dross, and take away all thy tent. He's turning his hand upon us to purge our impurities for his sake. Can you read Isaiah chapter 48, verse 10 and 11, please? Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. The afflictions to take away our pollutions are spoken of. Can we read Jubilees chapter 23, verse 22 to 24, please? And a great punishment will befall the deeds of this generation from Ahia. And he would give them over to the sword, and to judgment, and to captivity, and to be plundered and devoured. The beast will have his 42 months to overcome Israel during our punishment. Continue, please. And he will wake up against them the sinners of the Gentiles, 
who have neither mercy nor compassion, and who will respect the person of none, neither old nor young, nor anyone. For they are more wicked and strong to do evil than all the children of men, and they will use violence against Israel. That's physical violence. And transgression against Jacob. Spiritual warfare inspiring lust to get us to sin, and sins bring forth death. So these two strategies will result in what? Then much blood will be shed upon the earth, and there will be none to gather and none to bury. So while we may see plainly the violence against Israel by police killings or gun violence, we are missing the war to commit transgression with the horoscope worship or upcoming birthday parties or the entertainment industry's influences onto fornication, pride, and etc., for example, that will eventually cause another's blood to be shed. Verse 24, please. In those days they will cry aloud and call and pray that they may be saved from the hand of the sinners, the Gentiles, but none will be saved. Our transgressions that we were seduced to commit will hide his face from our prayers. Can you read Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2, please? Behold, a highest hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither is his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your Elohim, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. This time to come will be hard on everyone. Can you read Jubilees chapter 23, verse 25, please? And the heads of the children will be white with gray hair. And a child of three weeks will appear old like a man of 100 years. And their stature will be destroyed by tribulation and oppression. So there we see that man is three weeks old. He's only 21, but he'll look like he's 100 due to the tribulation and oppression to come. And this is not the only affliction we will face for our purging. There are righteous afflictions that come upon us unawares too. Can you read Hermas? Parable 6, chapter 3, verse 2 to 6, please. All right. Uh, Hermes, parable 6, chapter 3, verse 2. This, saith he, is the angel of punishment. And he is the one of the just angels and presides over punishment. So he received those who wander away from Elohim and walk after the lusts and deceits of this life and punish them as they deserve with fear and various punishments. I would fain learn, sir, said I, of what sort of these various punishments. Listen, saith he, the various tortures and punishments are tortures belonging to the present life. For some are punished with losses, and others with want, and others with diverse maladies, and others with every kind of unsettlement, and others with insults from unworthy persons, and with suffering in many other respects. For many, being unsettled in their plans, set their hands to many things, and nothing ever goes forward with them. And then they say that they do not prosper in their doings, and they do if not enter into their hearts that they have done evil deeds, but they blame the Lord. When then they are afflicted with every kind of affliction, then they are delivered over to me for good instruction, and are strengthened in the faith of the Lord, and serve the Lord with a pure heart the remaining days of their life. But if they repent, the evil works which they have done rise up in their hearts, and then they glorify Allah saying, He is a just judge and that they suffer justly each according to his doings. And they serve the Lord thenceforward with a pure heart and are prosperous in all their doings, receiving from the Lord whatsoever things they may ask. And then they glorify the Lord because they were delivered over to me and they no longer suffer any evil thing. Hopefully this helps better understand what we are going through and why. Interesting you notice we have to go through that affliction to bring us to repentance. 
because we did evil and it helps us see that we did evil deeds. And when we confess and we get prospered, then we'll receive whatever we ask in our prayer. Hopefully it helps understand the process we're in. And it's the Lord that's bringing this punishment upon us. Can you read Isaiah chapter 3, verse 1 to 5 and verse 12, please? Uh, Isaiah chapter 3, verse 1. For behold, the Lord Ahiah of hosts doeth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of fifty and the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent order. And I will give the children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The children shall behave themselves proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to error. And destroy the way of thy paths. The daughters of Zion will have to go through affliction as well to watch them from their struggles. Can you read Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16, please? Moreover, Ahia saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty. Haughtiness is the chief struggle for the women. The world promotes pride for all. Yet in particular, pertaining to the Hebrews, the women are encouraged to be ruling over their men. But that's an affliction upon the men, as we read in Isaiah 3 and 12, and not what we are called unto. Can you read Proverbs 16 and 19, please? Better is it to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Sisters have a choice to make for themselves, whether to walk in the pride of the world and divide the spoils or to be humble with the lowly man and await the benefit of the kingdom together. This is something the daughters of Zion have to overcome in their hearts to make a choice to strive to overcome. Thankfully, the Lord will deliver his daughters in the midst of these tribulations to come. Can you read Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, please? Moreover, Isaiah saith, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and what was stretched forth next? Stretch forth next. This means they'll be strong minded, doing as they please rather than humble, and willing to listen to their men in all things as the Lord teaches to be in subjection to your husband in all things to win over unbelievers in First Peter 3 and 1. Continue, please. And wanton eyes. Fornication attacks women more than men, as the angel told Reuben in Reuben chapter 5, verse 3. The daughters of Zion will struggle with wanton eyes. They have an inward struggle with fornication to overcome. It may not be that they will physically go commit fornication, but in their hearts, they are struggling with it. My evidence of the wanton eyes committing adultery in their hearts. Continue, please. Walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. They're being misled to seek attention, wanting to be seen and desired by others. And this agrees with what Reuben was shown, the spirit of fornication uses to cause them to fall. Refer to Testament of Reuben chapter 5, and hopefully that helps in your fight for the faith to know what you're up against, sisters, and for men teaching their daughters, and husbands teaching their wives. So we see the struggles that the daughters will be washed from, heartiness, strong-mindedness, wanton eyes and attention seeking for these things the lord will chasten them as a father does his children whom he loves that he may have joy of them in the end can you read isaiah chapter 3 verse 17 please uh therefore the lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of zion their chastening will be in the areas that matter to them like their beauty continue please and ahia will discover their secret parts there will come a time that he will uncover his daughter's faults for them to come to repentance. Hence, a man ought to dwell with his woman, 
according to knowledge given on unto her by patience and long suffering with her shortcomings, not being bitter against her for them, because she has her own process of awakening to go through after the man has been chastened to do right first. After the man brings forth good fruits, then when the Lord wills, the Lord will cause her to see her faults after, since it starts with the man. Now we see women are in for a fight against evil, yet it comes from the shortcomings of the men. Can you read Hosea chapter 4, verse 13 and 14, please? They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars and elms, because the shadow thereof is good. Therefore your daughters shall commit whoredom, and your spouses shall commit adultery. See how spiritual fornication and idolatry of the fathers lead our daughters and wives astray? Continue, please. I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, nor your spouses when they commit adultery, for themselves are separated with whores, and they sacrifice with harlots. Therefore, the people that do of not understand shall fall. See how the sins of the men, meddling with unclean spirits and spiritual fornication, opened up the women to falter from young ages? And you see, in talking about it's the men first, the men have to get it together first. The women aren't being punished because the men have things to get together. When we do right, then it will open up the door for the women's healing. So when the men turn and start doing right, things will turn for the good. Though it will still take a process of affliction to see change. So it takes a lot of patience in this walk for everyone involved. Can you read Hermas, Parable 7, Chapter 1, Verse 1 and 2, please? After a few days, I saw him on the same plain, but also I had seen the shepherds, and he says to me, What seekest thou? I am here, sir, say I, that thou mayest bid the shepherd that punisheth go out of my house for he afflicted me much it is necessary for thee saith he to be afflicted for so saith he the glorious angel ordered us concerning thee for he wisheth thee to be proved it's good to know the lord is testing us with these afflictions we have to bring forth fruits worthy of repentance as we are being proved and we're in this to see the scriptures to understand how Though the afflictions to come is coming from the Lord to endure it with patience. Continue, please. Why? What so evil things have I done, sir, say I, that I should be delivered over to this angel? Listen, saith he, thy sins are many, yet not so many that thou shouldest be delivered over to this angel. But thy house has committed great iniquities and sins. And the glorious angel was embittered at their deeds. And for this cause he bade thee be afflicted for a certain time, that they also might repent and cleanse themselves from every lust of this world. When therefore they shall repent and be cleansed, then shall the angel of punishment depart. Look at the cross of Christ a man has to bear. Not only must he go to his own affliction for his sins, he also has to be afflicted for the sins of his family so that they may repent and cleanse themselves. Hopefully this helps everyone appreciate the journey we all face. A man ought to appreciate his wife and her shortcomings because it's his opportunity to be as his Lord. And a woman ought to reverence her father or husband because he is being afflicted, sacrificing himself for his faults and for hers and to save their family as the Lord is the Savior of the church. Can you read Ephesians 5 and 23, please? For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. This is the righteousness of Allah. Hopefully this helps to cause families to better support each other in their walks, or at least help the believing spouse, whomever that may be, to be understanding towards the unbelieving spouse. Now, one might say, why do I have to be afflicted for another's faults? 
Let's find out. Can you read Hermas parables seven, chapter one, verse three to five, please? Mm -hmm. uh, Hermas parable seven, chapter one, verse three. I say to him, sir, if they perpetrated such deeds that the glorious angel is embittered, what have I done? They cannot be afflicted otherwise, saith he, unless thou, the head of the whole house, be afflicted. But if thou be afflicted, they also of necessity will be afflicted. But if thou be prosperous, they can suffer no affliction. So you see how it starts with the head of the house? What we do, men, affect our family. So as the Lord is working us through our faults and bringing forth fruit, keep pressing forward because our family depends on it. There will come a time when the family will come to repentance, yet the affliction don't end there. It's just another phase of growth. Can you read verse 4, please? But behold, sir, say I, they have repented with their whole heart. I am quite aware myself, saith he, that they have repented with their whole heart. Well, thinkest thou that the sin of those who repent are forgiven forthwith? Certainly not. But the person who repents must torture their own soul. It must be thoroughly humble in its every action and be afflicted with all the diverse kinds of affliction. And if he endure the afflictions which come upon him, assuredly, he who created all things and endowed them with power will be moved with compassion and will bestow some remedy. So you see, each person, the head of the house, the wives, and the children have their individual fight to overcome themselves to come to repentance and prove their repentance through the affliction, showing themselves approved for the Lord to be moved to give a remedy. Continue, please. And this what Allah do. If in any way he perceived the heart of the penitent pure from every evil thing, Hopefully this helps understand the fight everyone is in to be long-suffering and support one another. The true church supports one another to help guide a family onto how they are to work together instead of being in competition with one another or thinking evil of one another. Can you read 1 Clement chapter 2, verse 5 to 6, please? You were sincere and simple, and free from malice one towards another. Every sedition and every schism was abominable to you. You mourned over the transgressions of your neighbors. You judged their shortcomings to be your own. Hopefully this gives guidance on how people ought to operate together in their family. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2 and verse 1, please. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Right. Go ahead, please. Verse one. Okay. Uh, okay. That was Galatians six and two, and then we jump into Galatians six and one. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Hopefully, that helps for guidance on supporting each other in the household for the tribulation and purging to come, where one is overtaking a fault, a spouse may be, you know, sorrowful or really sad about their shortcomings or their struggles. Ye which are spiritual, restore that person in meekness. You know, there's not a reason to be bitter against them or to be abrasive towards them, lest thou also be tempted and a root of bitterness be found in you and fall from the faith as well. So. Hopefully that's a little relationship counseling there from the scriptures. Um, with all we just went through, some want to make sure we understand for the men. First, we have to get it together. Then when we start getting it together, the affliction doesn't go away because then the afflictions because of what our family's doing are affecting us. And even still, we have to continue growing and doing right in order that our family can see 
the light of Christ and be converted unto repentance. And then nonetheless, when they come to repentance, then we all together as a unit have to bring forth fruits worthy of repentance because we're each facing our own individual battle within ourselves, seeking to prove ourselves worthy to move the Lord to compassion to give us a remedy. So hopefully that helps know it's truly, as the Lord said in Luke, what is it, 8 and 16, they that receive the seed on good ground are they that in an honest and good heart bring forth fruit with patience. It's really going to require patience because these afflictions are going to continue. As you can see, Hermas, once he saw his family started doing right, remember he said, I'm quite aware of it. They repented. He thought, okay, get this afflicted angel out of my house. Then my family repented. And the angel had to give him understanding for him to be patient to know, like, it's not over yet. It's not just for giving forth with. Everyone has to be proved. So hopefully that helps for guidance to endure it all together. All right. Now, returning to the afflictions that the women will face for their growth. Can we read Isaiah chapter 3, verse 17 to 25, please? Okay. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 17. Therefore the Lord will smite with the scab the crown of the heads of the daughters of Zion, and Ahiah will discover their secret parts. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet, and their calls, and their round tires like the moon, the chains, and the bracelets, and the mufflers, the bonnets, and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands, and the tablets, and the earrings, the rings, and nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel, and the mantles, and the wimples, and the crispin pins, the glasses, and the fine linen, and the hoods, and the veils. And it shall come to pass, and instead of a sweet smell, there shall be a stink, and instead of a girdle, a rent, and instead of well set hair, baldness, and instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth and burning instead of beauty interestingly the lord knows what it takes to get us to change the men have to be put in fear being oppressed sacrificing themselves for their family yet the women are concerned with their beauty naturally their sweet scent looking good with nice garments their physique with stomachers and etc to look nice and you know a woman is serious about her hair so he will touch them in such things as matter to them to open their hearts unto him. Can you read verse 25, please? Thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war. The unrighteous men of Judah and Jerusalem would die in the war by sword, leaving only few righteous men left. Can you read Amos 9 and 10, please? All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword which say the evil shall not overtake us, nor prevent us. The righteous men will be well, though, as the Lord afflicts them, because they have the right mindset, while the sinners will fall. Can you read Psalms 34 and 19? Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but I will deliver him out of them all. Psalms 119, verse 75, 71. 92 and 93, please. Uh, Psalms chapter 119, verse 75. I know, O Ahiah, that thy judgments are right, and that thou in faithfulness hath afflicted me. You see, the, this is a faithful act for us to be afflicted, saving his children. Continue, please. Uh, Psalms 119 and 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. And we see what the afflictions are for, for us to learn his statutes. Continue, please. Uh, Psalm 419 and 92. Unless thy law had been my delights, I should then have perished in mine affliction. We see what we need to delight in to make sure we make it through this affliction, his law. Continue, please. Psalm 119 and 93. I will never forget thy precepts, for with them thou hast quickened me. He is going to bring us to life through his precepts. 
See how the perspective gives strength to overcome. The mind of Christ will deliver the righteous. Can you read Isaiah chapter 3, verse 10 and 11, please? Say ye to the righteous, that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat of the fruit of their doings. Right. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. Now with the loss of her men, the daughters of Zion shall be low. Can you read Isaiah 3 verse 26, please? And her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. Let's hear from our mother to see what she has to say about what is to come. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 2 to 7, please. Uh, you want to give people understanding of what we're about to read? Okay. Our mother is Jerusalem, the church. She is the wife of Christ. In, in the book of Clement, I think it's Second Clement chapter 14, it tells how in the beginning when he made male and female, Christ was the male and the church was the female. This as speaking is actually our mother, our spiritual mother from the beginning, the wife of Christ. She is hid in the Holy Spirit, but here in these times she's being revealed. That's why you read in Revelations 22, I think it's after verse 16, it says, the bride say it and the spirit say it. She finally fully reveals herself then. And then she further reveals herself to Hermas later on. But here in Ezra, she speaks of what she is experiencing as these afflictions come upon her children. So we're going to hear the words of our mother for our exaltation. Uh -huh. Uh, second Ezra chapter 2 verse 2 the mother that bare them saith unto them go your way you children for I am a widow and forsaken I brought you up with gladness but with sorrow and heaviness have I lost you for ye have sinned before the Lord your Elohim and done that thing that is evil before him but what shall I now do unto you I am a widow and forsaken Go your way, O my children, and ask mercy of the Lord. As for me, O Father, I call upon thee for a witness over the mother of these children, which would not keep my covenant, that thou bring them to confusion, and the mother to spoil, and that they may be no offspring of them. Let them be scattered abroad among the heathen, let their names be put out of the earth, for they have despised my covenant. See, we see what's happening to the unrighteous if we don't keep the covenant. It's no pleasure to our mother to see the wrath come upon us from our disobedience. Can you read Baruch? This is out of the Apocrypha, chapter 4. Verse 9 to 14, please. Um, Baruch, chapter 4, verse 9. For when she saw the wrath of Elohim coming upon you, she said, Hearken, all ye that dwell about Zion. Elohim hath brought upon me a great mourning. For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. Christ is the everlasting Father, according to Isaiah 9 and 6. To help understand, just as Isaiah chapter 3 says, it's the Lord. Christ Yache, that's bringing the affliction upon us for our good in the end as a loving father. Continue verse 11 to 14, please. Uh, Baruch chapter 4, verse 11. With joy did I nourish them, but sent them away with weeping and mourning. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow, and forsaken of many. Who for the sins of my children am left desolate? because they depart from the law of Elohim. They knew not his statutes, nor walked in his ways of his commandments, nor trod in the path of discipline in his righteousness. His paths of discipline are in his Holy Spirit of discipline's fruits. You see what removed us from our mother, departing from the law, the statutes, the commandments, and the fruits of the Spirit in his righteousness. 
continue, please. Let them that dwell about Zion come, and remember ye the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting hath brought upon them. Uh, Baruch chapter mm -hmm. 4, verse 17. Yes, we're going to read through 17 through 23, please. But what can I help you? For he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. Go your way, O my children, go your way, for I am left desolate. I have put off the clothing of peace and put upon me the sackcloth of my prayer. I will cry unto the everlasting in my days. Be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto the Lord, and he will deliver you from the power and hand of the enemies. For my hope is in the everlasting, that he will save you. She has faith in the head, Yache, too. And may it be encouraging to see that she's praying unto the everlasting as well and encourages the children to pray. Continue, please. And joy is come yeah. unto me from the Holy One, because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting, our Savior. Notice she said, our Savior, he is her head, the Savior of the body. So he is saving his wife too, just like the head of the house is a Savior of his wife, as we talked about earlier. Continue, please. Notice now you're seeing a change. Something's going to transpire that's going to bring joy unto her. All right, continue in verse 23, please. For I sent you out with mourning and weeping. Allah will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. How shall these things come to pass? Let's look at 2nd Edges chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, and then 17 to 19, please. Take heaven and earth to witness. For I have broken the evil in pieces and created the good. For I live, saith the Lord. These afflictions will break the evil and create new creatures in Christ for the good. Mother, embrace thy children and bring them up with gladness. Make their feet as fast as a pillar. For I have chosen thee, saith the Lord. The mother will bring up her children as babes with her sincere milk of the word to make them stand as pillars in the faith. Verse 17 to 19. Fear not, thou mother of the children, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord. For thy help will I send my servants, Esau and Jeremy, after whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for thee twelve trees laden with diverse fruits. She will be given the servants Isaiah and Jeremiah to help teach her children the gospel. Continue, please. And as many fountains flowing with milk and honey, seven mighty mountains whereupon there grow roses and lilies, whereby I will fill thy children with joy. The children of the church will be filled with joy in their afflictions after it takes their afflictions to open their hearts and ears to hear the gospel. Go back to Baruch chapter 4, verse 25 to 29, please. Um, Baruch chapter 4, verse 25. My children suffer patiently the wrath that is come upon you from Elohim. For thine enemy hath persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shalt tread upon his neck. My delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away at the flock out of the enemies. Be a good comfort, O my children, and cry unto Allah, for he shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. For as it was your mind to go astray from Allah, so being returned, seek him ten times more. She is says to be zealous for good works. And notice she said a few times to pray. Cry unto Allah, prayer is important for us. And have the right mind that as we went astray from Allah, so ten times more, seek him. 
Continue, please. He that hath brought these plagues upon you, bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. As the sons and daughters of Zion are afflicted in their purging process, certain women without husbands will be seeking for a covering from an upright man because the righteous will escape out of the war. Can you read Isaiah 4 and 3, please? And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. With all that will have transpired, oppression and tribulation in the world and the women being delivered from the spirits that were overcoming them to take them away from the humility of Sarah, Rachel, and Leah, once enlightened, they will be urgent to marry a righteous man, to be called by his name, to be delivered from their reproach, according to prophecy. Can you read Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1? And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. This is all in the time of the tribulation. They, seven, will take hold of one man because he isn't looking for a wife, having been delivered from his own lust. He'll be focusing on his labor and good works until Ahaya give him a wife, as Reuben exhorted. Continue, please. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. These women were financially stable, able to provide their own bread and clothing, so they didn't want it for financial gain, like is the motive for some today. These women have had the change of heart to live humbly with the lowly man rather than divide the spoils with the proud. Also, the man wasn't seeking them out because they had to bargain with him to convince him to take them since food, raiment, and duty of marriage is the responsibility of a man to his wife or wives, according to Exodus chapter 22, verse 10. So in bargaining, the woman will supplement the food and apparel in hopes that he would do something in return. Let's see what that is. Continue, please. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. This is what they need of him, to be called by his name. And scriptures give understanding that it requires that he lay with them to be his wives. Hence, they have to convince him with the bargain of food and apparel to comfort his concerns for the duties of a husband and convince him to fulfill the duty of marriage in intimacy to take them as wives. A woman must be slept with to be called by a man's name, according to precept. Can we read Tobit chapter 3, verse 8, please? We go into this story to see scriptural understanding of what it means to be called by a man's name, by scripture. This is where to the law and the testimony, if we speak not according to this manner, there is no light in us. Continue, please. Tobit chapter 3, verse 8. Because that she had been married to seven husbands, whom Osmodeus the evil spirit had killed before they had lain with her. Notice, she was married because Dawi was paid for her, but none lay with her, so the marriages were never consummated with intimacy. Hence, they were incomplete. Let's see what that means when the woman isn't lain with. Continue, please. Do thou not know, said they, that thou hast strangled thine husbands? Thou hast had seven husbands, neither was thou named after any of them. Though dowry was given, she wasn't named after any of them because none actually lay with her. So the seven women seeking to be called by the name of this one man in these end times will need him to lay with them in order to do so that he may be their husband truly. Now that we understand that part, let's understand the rest of Isaiah 4 and 1. Can you go back to Isaiah 4 and 1, please? Sure. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. All right. The next part, they said, only let us call by thy name to take away our reproach. The reproach that the women are seeking to have taken away by precept is for them to bear seed. That's how women's reproaches are taken away, according to scripture. 
Can you read Genesis chapter 30, verse 22 to 23, please? And Elohim remembered Rachel, and Elohim hearkened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bare a son and said, Elohim hath taken away my reproach. This held true in the New Testament as well. Can you read Luke chapter 1, verse 24 and 25? And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. So according to Isaiah 4 and 1, there will come a time in the tribulation after the men have been humbled to do right and the women have been humbled as well, that seven women will seek one righteous man to marry them by bargaining with him so that he may take them as wives to lay with them to be called by his name and they will bear him seed to take away their reproach. It will be a blessing to these men to be a husband unto the widowed women, if they may be any, and father to their children for those women who may have come into the marriage with prior children as well. Can you read Ecclesiasticus chapter 4 verse 10? Be as a father unto the fatherless, and instead of a husband unto their mother, so shalt thou be as the son of the Most High, and he shall love thee more than thy mother doeth. That's interestingly enough. <laughs> he will love you more than your mother, and we know who our mother is, so that's a great blessing for those who will be blessed with that in the Lord. So, Prophecy shows multiple wives will be for the deliverance of the daughters of Zion in these end times. These families that shall be established will be beautiful and glorious, having the spirit of the Lord in the whole household of those men and women who come together and escape of Israel. Can you read Isaiah chapter 4, verse 2 to 6, please? Yep. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy. For everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem. The remnant of the men that fulfill Isaiah 4 and 1 will be called holy. There's a colon in this sentence here. So the Lord is going to further explain what he's talking about. Continue to verse 4, please. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion. The washing of the daughters of Zion has to happen. And those women undergo purification to fulfill Isaiah 4 and 1 with that holy remnant of the men. Continue, please. And shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. The Persian of Jerusalem will cleanse the whole house, both men and women of Israel, by those spirits of judgment and burning. Then, after these things come to pass, what will come next? Continue to verse 5, please. And Ahia will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion, And upon her assemblies, a cloud and smoke by day, and the shining of a flame and fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. Then, after the purging of Jerusalem, the men and the women being cleansed and coming together, then the time of the wilderness will come, when the cloudy pillar by day and the pillar of fire by night returns over the congregation of Israel. Continue to verse 6, please. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat, and for a place of refuge, and for a covert from storm and from rain. So that's speaking of the people being in the wilderness, again here in these end times. So Isaiah 4 and 1, and the purging of the men and women will come to pass during the prophesying of the two witnesses for the 1260 days before the people flee to the wilderness. So hopefully this understands what is to come and when these things will be. All right. Anything you got, Zachwa? Uh, Yeah, man, I actually wanted to touch back on Hermes Parable 6. 
uh, it was some good stuff in there. Please. Um, Hermes Parable 6, uh, chapter 3, verse 2. This says he is the angel of punishment. He is one of the just angels and presides over punishment. So he received those who wander away from Elohim and walk after the lusts and deceits of his life and punish them as they deserve with fearful and various punishments. See, this is when it starts getting deep because a lot of people don't understand why they're being punished because they don't know the law. And this is what makes the law so important because as I continue to read on with the various punishments that happen, it creates that, that life where you can never get ahead, where you're always stuck in the same place or the same rut, or every time you start moving forward, something happens and it pulls you back down. And a lot of us can relate to this. So that's why I really wanted to touch on it. Um, I'm at chapter 3, verse 3. So he received those who wander away from Elohim and walk after the lusts and deceits of this life and punish them as they deserve with fearful and various punishments. I would fain learn, sir, said I, of what sort of these various punishments? Listen, said he, the various tortures and punishments are tortures belonging to the present life. For some are punished with losses. So, Things happen when you lose stuff, your car, your, your motor goes out in your car, um, somebody's steals from you, some various act that something happens and it just, it sets you back. And others with want, you might see other people having things and you feel like you, you need to have those things or you should be at the level that they are in their life. And others with diverse maladies. Now, you know I'm going to have to go Google that. You know what maladies <laughs> is, Pastor I'm about to I Google wanna make it sure that I, I want to make sure that we get an understanding of these verses, man. All right. Maladies. Maladies, a disease or ailment. Mm. So you can get, get sick. sick. All right. Get sick because of your sins. All right. So the different things that come upon you, these different situations, you have to really examine why is it happening. And not just of some random act. And others with every kind of unsettlement. So you're unsettled about everything. You're just not happy or content with where you are in your life. And others with insults from unworthy persons. So people start treating you badly. And with suffering in many other respects. I thought this was crazy. For many being unsettled in their plans set their hands to many things. And nothing ever goes forward with them. And then they say that they do not prosper in their doings. And it doeth not enter into their hearts that they have done evil deeds. But blame the Lord. That was powerful. Thought that was very powerful. For anybody that's trying to walk forward in the gospel or even trying to walk forward in life itself. I thought that was very powerful to know that and to be able to change it now that you know it. Uh, did you have anything else, Brother Kasafo, before I go through the, um, through the chat? No. Other than we have one more lesson on the end times and then we'll be done and move on to something else. <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, y'all, y'all all remember that we we need everybody to send their um send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail if you're interested in being a church member. Uh, we'll get all the information we need from you through the email, just so everybody knows. And we do have the updates on the website. Um, 
please go and check that out. There's so much information on that website. It's a great tool. It's a great tool to have and to use. The calendar is up, up there. Please make sure you download the calendar so you can stay on track with all the holy days and feast days. It's, it's a great blessing. Um, shout out to Chalam, um, Brother Babakuya. Shout out to Chalam, Brother William Joseph. Uh, and we're glad you got the invitation. We appreciate you coming. Um, shout out to Chalam, Brother Esteban. Uh, shout out to Chalam, Sister Letta. We appreciate everything that you do, sister. You you are a great blessing. Shout out to Chalam, Sister Deborah. Uh, shout out to Chalam, Brother Chinedu. We hope you're doing well, brother. Um, yes, Brother William Joseph. That 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 precept definitely did tie it all together, and also the um the precepts in Genesis and Luke really tied it together showing that the um the reproach for the women is not bearing children so that is definitely correct uh shout out to Chalam brother johnny let's see shout out to Chalam brother ken uh brother kenworth first and foremost shout out to Chalam brother uh has a uh, viewpoints let's see he says we are now in the three and a half year tribulation. It will end in March of 2022. The great tribulation will there begin and end in September of 2025. This total seven complete years of tribulation. This is why so many so-called black Americans are openly being killed by the fallen angel authorities. Well, We'll know we're in the three and a half year tribulation when the daily sacrifice is taken away and abomination desolation is set up. So for our safety to ensure we're not walking in any misunderstanding or thing that is untrue, it's good for us to just wait for the signs to come to know when that time actually is. Uh, he also wrote the last rapture called the great vine harvest rapture or rapture of the bride will be this early September at or near the feast of trumpets. That's, that's not true. The, the only rapture to come before Christ comes is the two witnesses. We have that lesson on the, um, you can look at the end times playlist, understand the end time prophecies. The two witnesses, they're going to get raptured up before the end comes, and then no one else will be caught up in the sky until Christ actually returns for his second coming, and those that are his would meet him in the air. Right? Uh, Sister Zeba, shout out to Tyler. Uh, please, she wrote a comment, please stay on the end <laughs> time. Please stay on the end time because we need it. I wonder why I still <laughs> why why I'm still a single woman. This explains a lot. <laughs> so, so hey, a lot going praise on. Ahaya. Yeah, praise Ahaya for giving understanding. Now it comforts our heart <laughs> to be patient and know that his time will come. Yeah. Right. You gotta wait you're talking and, uh, about wait waiting for the right one. <laughs> right. Now you really know. <laughs> now you really know. And uh, we have that whole end time playlist. You go back and go through everything. Like, I I feel the Lord has been gracious that all in all, for anyone who goes through all those videos, will have a great understanding of what's to come and come for the heart. Yeah. Uh, Sister Letta says, blessing to you both. We thank you. Praise uh, uh, Ken Worth has another post. He says, if you do not believe that the son of uh Jesus Christ is Alahayim, and your personal savior, you will experience the worldwide torture and murder of all black people left after the rapture. Well, we do believe in Yache, just a edification on the name. You can find we have the playlist, Understanding Christ, the name of Christ, to know Jesus is the name of multiple Israelites. So it was a, a little thing they put out to turn us away. But thankfully, now we know we do believe Yache, the Christ is the son of Allah. 
And it's through that faith that we are striving to keep the commandments, bear the fruits of the spirit by faith in him. And we know we're going to be afflicted. We know the torture is going to come as we've been discussing in this purge. Maybe we should get the verse in, um, what the Baruch? That no man shall escape the tribulation. Oh yes, oh, the apocalypse of Baruch. Yes. Everyone's going to experience it. Baruch chapter 28, verse seven, and then chapter 29, verse one. Uh, Brother Kenworth, also, if you go to the website, we have a whole tab about um, about Christ being Allah, about, well, he said Allah Hayyam, but I, I want to make sure that he's not saying that, that Christ is the Father. Christ is Yeah, there's Ahaya. that definition on that, too. Yeah. He, he is the Son. Brother Ken, we got a lot to discuss, man. Yes, we do. You'll be surprised what the scriptures actually say. I got another one. Um, there are a total of at least four raptures. The barley harvest rapture of the 144,000 virgin Hebrews are those that have remained sexually pure in the marriage of one man slash woman. There's there's no scripture that teaches about four raptures. Um, it's only the only people that are going to be caught up in the sky because that's what a rapture means to be caught up in the air are the two witnesses, and then in the end when Christ comes, the rest of his people, the dead in Christ shall rise, and them that are his shall meet him in the air, and ever be with the Lord, according to the book of Thessalonians. So that's what's going to come. Those are the events of it from scripture. And we don't want to turn from the, to the right or to the left from that, lest we be found wanting. And in regards to the 144,000 that are virgins that weren't defiled with women, it's not speaking of them literally not getting married. It's speaking of the spirits that they are going to be clothed with. Because we see in Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1 now, understand those remnants of holy men, they're going to have women coming to be saved. So we know the men are going to get married. And that helps us understand um, Revelation chapter 14. When, they are, when they're virgins, it's because they're going to be clothed with the 12 holy spirits. The same 12 holy virgins that Hermas was introduced to in the book of the uh, Shepherd of Hermas. And these 144,000 men will not be defiled with women truly because they will be spiritually pure. The 12 women those 12 evil women spoken of in the shepherd of hermas will not have any place in these men and these men and because they're clothed with the 12 virgins and not have any defilement of the 12 evil women these men will be without fault before the throne of Allah Hayyam. all right and those 12 for the scriptures to know who those 12 those 12 virgins and those 12 Evil women are is in the Shepherd of Hermas, Parable 9, Chapter 15. I think it's verse 3 and 4. Let's see if we can get that real quick. Um, Brother William Joseph, um, the connection between Isaiah 3 and 26 and 47 and 1 is not the same um as far as the women sitting on the ground he's using that as a connection of a woman brought down low that that's the um pretty much the um what's the word that i'm looking for um i guess the connection between the two because when a woman is is sitting down on the ground it means that she's humble and in one case in in Isaiah 3 and 26, he's referring to the actual daughters of Zion. And in um, Isaiah 47 and 1, he's actually talking about Babylon, the, the great city that's going to be brought down and humbled. So um, th that's, the, com that's the, the connection between the two of those. Those virgins 
the 12 virgins and the 12 evil women. Shepherd of Hermas, parable 9, chapter 15, verse 1. Declare to me, sir, say I, the names of the virgins and of the women that are clothed in the black garments. Here, saith he, the names of the more powerful virgins, those that are stationed at the corners. The first is faith, and the second continence, and the third power, and the fourth long suffering. But the others stationed between them have these names, simplicity, guilelessness, purity, cheerfulness, truth, understanding, concord, love. He that beareth these names and the name of the son of Allah shall be able to enter into the kingdom of Allah. So you see how the 144,000 are going to be virgins bearing these names. This is speaking of how they will be in spirit. All right. Now, verse three, here saith he likewise the man of the women that wear the black garments. These are the women that Revelation chapter 14 is speaking of pertaining to the women that the men of Israel are not defiled with. Of these also four are more powerful than the rest. The first is unbelief. The second, intemperance. The third, disobedience. The fourth, deceit. And their followers are sadness, wickedness, wantonness, irascibility, falsehood, folly, slander, hatred. The servant of Allah Hayyam that beareth these names shall see the kingdom of Allah Hayyam, but shall not enter into it. So those are the precepts to help understand the virgins and the women being spoken of in Revelation chapter 14. All right. Back to you, Zach. Well, wow. I'm a little confused at some of Brother Kenworth's uh, comments of what he's actually trying to say. Um, he says, Allah I am the Father plus Allah I am the Mother or the Holy Spirit may Allah I am the Son or Jesus Christ, that are our example. Allah Hayim, the Son, is our Father because He is our Creator. Uh, I don't know if you can make anything of that. Oh, uh, I, I get what he's saying. Uh, hey, brother, the Father, the same one that Christ prayed unto when He was on the earth Himself, that is Ahaya Ashere Ahaya. He is Him that was, is, and will be. That father, the Holy Father, has a wife, the Holy Spirit, as you're explaining. Indeed, she is wisdom and she is justified of all her children. And they too have a first and only begotten son, the son of Allah Hayyam, Yache Christ, the son of the Holy Father. And Yache Christ, he is the creator. And he is the everlasting father, according to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. So he is a father as well. He's just not the holy father himself. Hopefully that helps bring everything together for clarity. Uh, William Joseph said, I'm going to have to email you, brothers, to clarify what I'm seeing there. Um, by the way, you, your sound, voice, and image, internet quality have been great. Good job getting that fixed. Thank you, brother. Praise Ahaya. Yeah, praise Ahaya. Uh, Kenworth says, Allah Hayyam, the son, prays to his father in heaven in John 17. Allah Hayyam, the son, is the father in Genesis chapter 1 and forward. In Genesis chapter 1, the scripture doesn't mention the father in Genesis chapter 1. Or four, it doesn't say father. It says the word G-O-D, which is actually Allah Hayyam, is plural. And in the scripture, it says, in the beginning, Allah Hayyam created the heaven and the earth. It was the three of them there that did the creation. The word was first made. And you can confirm that the word was first made to know that he is not the Holy Father himself. Because Christ said in Revelations chapter 3, verse 14, he said he is the beginning of the creation of Allah Hayyam. So he wasn't the first one there. The father was there before all. So 
is the simplicity of it is the father and mother were there. The father created the mother. She came out of his mouth. She is his breath. And then they made the son. And then the son created everything. Yes, um, can I, I, of it there. I, I see Brother Kenworth throwing around uh, G-O-D or Alahayim a lot. I don't think he actually understands the word that he's actually saying and what it means. There's a lesson on the understanding the names. It's a lesson called Who is God? We encourage you to reference that to get understand on the word G-O-D. Yeah, the word G-O-D is actually the name of a Babylonian deity. That's why we are particular not to use it. Even the word Elohim, I, I, I feel he needs to you need to have that understanding as well. There's also a lesson on understanding the Elohim yeah, or the Trinity. Just give me a minute. I'm just saying it for so. reference. Okay. The word Elohim is the Hebrew for the word where when in the Yiddish you hear Elohim, but the actual Hebrew word is Elohim. And that's what we're using for simple English. We could just say deity, yes, or power. Um, so I am posting these lessons for no. you. I'm sorry. Um, all right, uh, brother Kenworth. If you would be so kind just to check these two lessons out that I just posted for you. I uh, I see you're going he, brother Kenworth, you're going on a little rant, but um I I think that you're you're misinterpreting things. Um He's going on a little rant saying like he made himself a man to atone for our sins. He is the one who will who will all answer to at a judgment. He is our human's heavenly father because he created us. Um, yes, Christ is our father because he created us. Because nothing was created without him. Yes, he is our creator. Um, he did atone for our sins. And he is the one that we all have to answer to a judgment because he will be the one judging us because he was man and Elohim. He knows both for it to be fair enough for our judgment. Um, but some of the other things are just not correct according to scripture. Uh, we're not taking away anything that you're saying. Some of the stuff is actually correct, but some of the stuff is not correct. And we have to, we have to correct it. For the sake of the viewers and anyone else. The little piece that helps clarify, you just agree with what he said. Right. The fact that Christ was given authority to have judgment from his father helps differentiate that he is not the heavenly father himself. He is the everlasting father. There's just a difference in the two as far as who they are as entities. Yet they are one. On one accord. No, brother it. Kenworth, you're not you're not pricking my spirit or getting me riled up or anything. I just it seems like you're getting riled up. Um, so I just wanted to try to ease the situation a little bit and actually show you that we are actually on some of the same ball grounds, but some of the things are just not accurate according to scripture. So um, I, I cry out to Yache daily. Um, there's, there's many things that I, I, I pray for. So um, I definitely ask him to, to guide me. I'm not confused and I'm definitely working on my salvation daily. So um, thank you for that. Um, but nonetheless, uh, we hope that you do go check out those videos and actually learn f more edification. I see that you're zealous for the scriptures and the law. But um, as far as edification, um, you're you're a little lacking in some of the understandings. Just to be honest with you, um, Sister Serenity, 
uh, praise the high elder. Thank you. The, hope the lesson is great. Um, Brother Joseph. Uh, yeah, just, Did you say Serenity or Sean Rietta? <laughs> Sean Rietta, I'm oh. sorry, man. <laughs> That's what I was like, but I was like, how'd you get I'm sorry. <laughs> so I, I think I was looking at the R E T I A. So so Serenity. I was like, oh, Serenity. I'm, like, oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. She has Serenity. <laughs> I was trying to I was trying to put something on you. Get some serenity to you, man. Uh Sean Rietta. Did I say it right? I messed it up. Sorry, Zach. It's Sean Red Tia. <laughs> so we gotta get that day right, man. <laughs> you're talking about me, man, and I see at least mine was innocent. Okay. <laughs> sorry, oh, sis, man. We, we're sorry for calling you, getting your name wrong. But I'm praying for higher nonetheless. I'm sorry. All right. All right. We're gonna call it a day for everybody. A high the high and be praised. Um, may he keep everyone this day and we pray that everybody got to enjoy the lesson today. All right. Brother Cosmo, you got anything before we get, get out of here? Praise the high, yeah. Oh, I got it right, Zachwa. <laughs> Praise the high, Sean Retia. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, uh, Praise the Lord, man. Glad the edification was good for everybody. Odima uh, Chinedu. Uh, all right everybody everybody be blessed uh y'all joining us next sabbath how you willing we'll be oh. on at 10 a.m uh what's up cousin brother kenworth ken we're not laughing at you brother at all by no means that's not upright he had said um they laughed at noah before the flood uh we just having brotherly no, love not. with each other yeah no we're not laughing at you uh we're just trying to get on the same page with you and um with the scriptures though but we, we can't go to anything that's outlandish that's outside of the scriptures or that has no biblical base so it's not about laughing it's more so about uh speaking and conversing so that we both can reach a level of understanding that it's back by something more than our own personal um journey or feelings so that's that's what that's about all right all right we hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your sabbath day thank you for for joining us at hebrew readers church we hope the lesson was great and edifying and i keep you all all right. Uh, please send us an email for anybody that wants to be a church member so that we can get that rolling. And I think that's it. All right. Shout out to the Talon family. Peace. HRC, 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 HRC,